Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so my name is uh, Olivier Boumatar. I am a professor here at uh, Central Lille and a researcher in uh, IMN in the MRN group. Uh, today, um, I will uh, present the, the work we are uh, doing with my colleague, so Abel Ekrim Talbi, Aurélien Madamoro, uh, Otman Marbou, Yannick Duch, uh, Philippe Pernaud, and uh, Nicolas Persulin. Uh, on the coupling of uh, surface acoustic wave devices and uh, magnetic thin uh, fields, and more particularly on non resonant piezomagnetic elastic coupling uh, of uh, uh, in uh, micro nano structured ferromagnetic uh, thin film deposited on uh, radio frequency electroacoustic uh, waveguides. So, uh, in our group, uh, we are interested. Uh, uh, in this coping, partly uh, for the realization of a uh, magnetic field uh, sensor. Okay, so there is a wide range, um, a wide uh, variety of uh, magnetic uh, sensor technology, uh, going from the squids to a uh, magnetic diode uh, or um, all probes for uh, a wide variety uh, of uh, application. Uh, this application are going from uh, industrial for geophysical or um, um, uh, medical uh, applications such as uh, magnetocartography uh, or magnetoencephalography. Uh, uh, the choice of uh, one of such uh, uh, technology over the other uh, depends on the huge number of uh, parameters, for example, measurement uh, range frequency range, resolution, integration, noise, uh, operation uh, temperature, scalar or vector measurement, price, and, and so on. But uh, uh, one size does not fit uh, all these parameters. And uh, in our case, we are mainly interested in biomagnetic signal uh, measurement and uh, predictive maintenance for uh, rotating uh, electric ma machines. For this, we uh, work with uh, piezoelectro magnetoelastic heterostructure, uh, uh, which are artificial uh, composite structure, coupling uh, piezoelectric material and um, magnetostructive uh, material. Uh, the coupling between these two uh, kinds of uh, material uh, uh, make it possible uh, via uh, the uh, elastic subsystem to obtain uh, an electric uh, signal that is uh, depending on the applied uh, external uh, mag magnetic uh, field. Uh, in our case, we are interested in a magnetoelastic material, uh, which coup couples a magnetic subsystem and elastic subsystem uh, at uh, a point close to the uh, spin reorientation transition where uh, the spin system is extremely soft and uh, nonlinear. In this case, the, the softness and is transmitted to the elastic subsystem, inducing a large uh, delta E effect and giant uh, nonlinear elasticity. Uh, a long time ago, we, we began uh, the study of this material. Um, uh, using bulk uh, material such as uh, nickel uh, ferrite, uh, in which there is a very high controllability of the acoustic wave velocity uh, with the uh, applied external magnetic field as, uh, as shown on this, uh, on this figure. And at this time, the main application was for uh, acoustic wave uh, phase uh, conjugation. Uh, since then, we have moved to um, the study of uh, magnetoelastic material with uh, uniaxial uh, anisotropy and more precisely uh, spring magnet uh, multilayers that are uh, stacks of um, uh, layers of uh, uh, soft uh, magnetic material and uh, material with a giant ma magnetostriction. Uh, this um, um, material are um, made by structuring under magnetic field in order to uh, induce uh, in the material an, an easy axis. And what we obtain is um, a material with a, a, yeah, a giant um, a magnetostriction properties 
for example, uh, a big uh, a parameter uh, beta uh, B gamma two of the order of uh, 12 megapascal in the case of uh, 10 layers of uh, terbium cobalt two uh, iron cobalt uh, layers, and uh, with uh, an average uh, magnetic uh, property. Uh, for such material, the requirement for MEMS application are ideally uh, a high magnetostriction friction uh, B gamma two parameter, uh, high uh, saturation magnetostriction, friction, low anisotropy field, and uh, as shown on this figure, uh, a well-defined uh, spin orientation uh, transition point. Uh, so we use this uh, nanostructured uh, magnetoelastic uh, thin fin uh, for uh, magnetorization and uh, exaltation of device sensitivity uh, using the magnetoelastic coupling near the spin wire orientation transition. Um, we mainly work on three uh, applications, um, the nonlinear uh, and multimode actuation, for example, of uh, of uh, beams, the uh, manual for manual magnetoelectric uh, device, uh, such as uh, um, magnetic uh, memories, and for piezomagnetic source sensors that I will, uh, I'm going to, to describe in more detail uh, now. First of all, I will um, first uh, um, describe the, the piezomagnetic equivalent material material. Uh, model that we have developed in order to uh, uh, help us in the design of uh, our uh, sensors. So the, the idea is to, um, uh, to, to make a linearization of the magnetoacoustic or magnetoelastic equation around a uh, uh, function point. Um, so um, using the uh, landau lissage equation, so linearization of the landau lissage equation, we obtain the uh, dynamic magnetization around the functioning point, and then uh, the magnetic susceptibility and the piezomagnetic coefficient that depend on the external uh, magnetic field. Uh, when we uh, use this um, uh, effective parameter in the uh, equation of dynamics, we obtain the elastic tension as a function also of the external ma magnetic field. And those we end up with a couplet piezomagnetic uh, equation system uh, with uh, effective uh, parameters that depend on the external uh, magnetic field. So it's important to understand that at this point, that uh, all these effective parameters do not depend on the direction of propagation of the acoustic wave or on their uh, polariz polarization. Uh, so if we look at the effective electric constant uh, tensor, uh, so we can see that um, the, the, this elastic constant uh, depends uh, differently, uh, uh, both in amplitude and in, uh, in shape uh, on the external uh, magnetic field. When uh, we applied, for example, here, the external field uh, perpendicular to perpendicular to the uh, z axis. Uh, this tells us that um, uh, the uh, relay wave propagation will be uh, de depending on the on the applied magnetic field differently uh, than the, the case of the horizontal shear uh, wave because in the case of the relay wave propagation, the, uh, the velocity depends on the C11 and on the C13, so C11 here and the C13 um, uh, um, coefficient. And in the case of the horizontal shear wave, on the uh, C66 or the C44 par uh, parameter. Um, and it's clear now uh, with this that uh, uh, in this case, the, the horizontal shear wave. Um, uh, propagation will be uh, more affected by the uh, external uh, magnetic uh, magnetic field. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in uh, all the, the case, uh, the parameter that is important, uh, or the, ferric, the figure of merit, is the ratio between the B gamma two uh, squared uh, over the uh, anisotropy um, field. Uh, 
uh, and this is the parameter that we need to maximize to have, our, to, to have in order to have the maximum effect on uh, uh, the propagation of our acoustic uh, first acoustic wave. So this model has been validated on um, a lot of uh, different cases. I present here the case of uh, uh, low wave uh, propagation. Uh, low wave are all horizontal uh, shear waves that, that are guided within the magnetoelastic thin fin, as sh shown on this, uh, on this uh, figure. And we have uh, realized um, uh, different um, uh, devices with uh, optical or electronic lithography, depending on the frequency range. Uh, on the, on, on, during the presentation, I will show only results uh, concerning the, 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 the system on the, on the left uh, with a working frequency around 400 uh, mega, megahertz. Um, those, um, if we uh, characterize the device under an applied uh, magnetic field, uh, we can see that uh, for the uh, fundamental modes, a mode of uh, shear horizontal wave at 400 megahertz, we have a um, uh, uh, variation of the S21 parameter phase around uh, 25 uh, degree, which corresponds uh, to a variation of the order of uh, 0 0.25 percent of the um, uh, acoustic uh, velocity, and if we compare the, uh, the so in, in a red line uh, the experimental results to the theoretical uh, prediction obtained with uh, our model in uh, blue dots, uh, the, the the agreement is uh, is very good. Now, if we look at the third harmonic uh, uh, mode, uh, so the SH3 mode uh, propagation, which is at 1.2 uh, gigahertz, then we can see that uh, we have a 10 time increase of the sensitivity of the variation of the velocity in, in, uh, in this case. Now, if we uh, uh, calculate the uh, relative variation of the, the velocity as a function of the ratio of the uh, signals of the layer um, uh, on the um, uh, acoustic uh, wavelength, we can see that uh, we can see that with um, uh, a film of uh, um, 450 uh, nanometer thickness and at one gigahertz, we can obtain a variation up to 10 uh, 10 percent of the relative uh, variation of velocity. Uh, so to um, increase uh, the sensitivity or the resolution of our sensor, we uh, work on different uh, structure. So the first one is uh, to use the um, uh, multipass wave propagation effect on uh, the propagation of uh, relay waves, uh, uh, propag propagating in uh, in a thin film deposited on a piezoelectric um, material. If we look at the uh, signal, signal in, in time domain, we can see that we have uh, multiple, uh, uh, well, we have signals that, that, that are going through the sample uh, multi time, okay, so multi pass uh, signal up to uh, nine uh, transmission across the, 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 the layer. And then if we look at the uh, uh, transmission parameter as to one phase and uh, amplitude for each of these uh, multipass uh, signal, then we can see that the, the, uh, the, the phase, phase shift is increased uh, proportionally to the number of transit uh, pass. And uh, so the same for uh, the resolution of uh, or the sensitivity of our uh, sensor. In order to use this uh, effect, we, uh, we work also with the Fabri, Fabri Perro uh, cavity uh, structure. So the structure is composed of uh, two uh, interdigitized uh, transducers between two uh, reflectors um, to make a cavity. And in this cavity, uh, we uh, just uh, make the deposition of uh, our uh, magnetic uh, field uh, film. And uh, in this case, we use the fact that the energy of the acoustic uh, wave is trapped in the, the mode of the 
the cavity mode. And so in, inside the magneto elastic uh, fin or magneto elastic uh, layer, uh, in this case, the, so in, in the fabricated uh, device, the, um, the, the mode uh, appear at a frequency around uh, 950 uh, megahertz. Uh, when we look at the characterization of this device, we can see that uh, the, um, the variation of the, the, the phase or the variation of the velocity uh, of the, the wave uh, as a function of the external applied field is the same as the one uh, obtained in the uh, time domain reflectometry presented uh, before with uh, nine pass so in this case, we exploit, uh, in fact, the, 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 the quality factor of the cavity mode, and we are able to, uh, uh, to increase uh, by a factor of 10 the, the sensitivity or the resolution of our uh, sensor uh, compared to a simple, uh, simple uh, delay line. So the seg second uh, kind of uh, system or structure we are work, uh, work, worked on uh, to improve the, the sensitivity of um, our sensor is uh, to use a lamp wave device. So lamp wave is uh, plate acoustic modes. Uh, and uh, so we design a lamp wave acoustic uh, uh, resonator, highly sensitive to magnetic field for uh, sensors application uh, that combines uh, magnetic field uh, thin film deposited on a piezo membrane main structure uh, with uh, two interdigited uh, transducers in order to uh, create the lamp, uh, lamp wave in the, in, the, in the system and to have a lamp wave uh, resonator. So the, the, um, the piezoelectric uh, layer uh, membrane is made of uh, aluminum nitride uh, deposited on a thin uh, um, a titanium uh, nitride uh, uh, layer, and we add also uh, uh, nanocrystalline uh, diamond uh, layer in order to uh, improve the resistance of the mechanical resistance of uh, our uh, membrane. And uh, we just uh, make a deposition of our ma magnetic field uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this membrane. Uh, if we look at the device uh, devices uh, fabricated, we can see that if we uh, if uh, we, we can see that um, uh, um, uh, that the uh, the addition of the uh, nanocrystalline um, uh, diamonds uh, improve the the quality of the membrane. And if you look here, uh, the the system without the, this uh, diamond layer. We can see that uh, the, the there is we see uh, heterogeneity in the in the membrane, uh, which completely disappear when we uh, add the the, the the diamond layer. Uh, uh, moreover, it uh, does not uh, deteriorate the quality of the resonator. The the, the fact that we add this uh, this uh, nano crystalline uh, diamond layer. And uh, it uh, just uh, increase the, um, the the frequency of our uh, resonator. So if we look uh, at the experimental results that we have obtained on long wave mode uh, sensitivity to magnetic field applied along, uh, in this case, uh, the hard axis, so perpendicular to the, to the axis, uh, for three different modes. Uh, so. For the S0, so the symmetric S0 mode or the anti-symmetric A0 mode, uh, and uh, for the um, uh, shear horizontal mode, we can see that uh, exactly uh, as we have in, in the case of uh, surface acoustic wave propagating on the substrate, the, uh, the, the, the sensitivity is also better in the case of the shear horizontal, uh, horizontal mode. So in order to, to improve uh, further the, the sensitivity of um, our system, uh, we begin to, uh, to, to look uh, numerically uh, at the, the, the influence of uh, putting uh, an array of uh, diamonds uh, dots 
uh, above our uh, membrane, uh, so piezoelectric membrane, and uh, we put the, the magnetic field above the, 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 the dot. If, so this is the classical uh, structure of uh, a phononic crystal. So if we calculate the bound structure of such uh, phononic crystal, uh, we can see that uh, a flat bands appears and uh, appear, uh, in this case four, and uh, each of these uh, flat band correspond to, uh, a, as shown here, to a localized mode of the uh, acoustic waves inside the, the, the magnetic, uh, magnetic uh, film. So uh, there is two of these uh, modes that, that are coupled to the propagating acoustic waves in, in the membrane. Uh, and uh, if we look at the variation of the, the frequency of, uh, or the velocity of the propagating wave, we can see that uh, in this case, we can uh, obtain variation up to 5% of the, of the frequency of uh, functionment of the, our system, um, uh, even if uh, the, uh, the, the thickness of the layer, so it's uh, 200 nanometer here, is uh, lower than the, uh, the, um, the wavelength, which is of the order of one micrometer at uh, four, uh, four gigahertz. So in conclusion, uh, we have used a coupled uh, multi-physical system to transfer properties from one system to the other. Um, and uh, if one system is near or an instability or a phase transition, then the whole coupled system becomes highly sensitive to the source of excitation and highly nonlinear in the venous, in, in the venicity or vicinity of this uh, critical state. Uh, and then we have shown that it is possible uh, to combine this concept with nanostructured active material, MEMS and phononic uh, structures to provide innovative system with extraordinary and tenable uh, properties in the field of uh, radio frequencies device for sensing and in particular, sensing man, man, magnetic uh, field. And uh, in the last slide, I just uh, put uh, a resume of uh, what I've presented today. So for modeling of piezo magnetic elastic coplic in a radio frequency electroacoustic waveguide, uh, I showed the derivation of an equivalent effective parameter of a magnetoelastic material under uh, applied external uh, magnetic field. Um, I showed the validation of the model for low waveguide uh, with an isotropic uh, magnetoelastic guiding layer. And uh, we obtain relative phase velocity variation that can reach 10% in, in optimized case. And uh, I have uh, presented uh, uh, dif different new design uh, based on the uh, confined and increased lifetime of the elastic wave within the mag magnetic thin field in order to increase the resolution up to 10 times. Uh, especially when we use uh, uh, cavity mode or a uh, long wave uh, to achieve uh, high sensitivity magnetic field sensor. So uh, we plan or we hope that uh, in optimized uh, design with optimal uh, material property, we can reach a um, uh, uh, limit of uh, detection around 10 picotesla per square hertz in order to be able to uh, make uh, uh, magneto uh, cardio uh, measurements. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Olivier. Uh, I have to confess that I don't really have questions because I'm pretty familiar with this work, but haha, we have some in the audience. So um, the f maybe I have one or two questions. The first is uh, related to the page eight. It's for the puzzle magnetic model. Uh, 
Uh, okay, thank you. So I saw there are two different angle theta and C. And I think it's the defacing between the magnetization also the applied mighty field. So it's, it's, it means that piezo-magnetic model is also include the defacing when I apply the, the static mighty field. But for thin structure, I think also you should consider the um, anisotropy of our plane also in plane. The difference between that, I, I, I know for, for now for my, for my material, if I apply really, for example, um, 90 degree between the H and the M. So the, 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 the its behavior is totally different. And also I'm, it's really difficult to estimate how to buy a model to simulate. You, you said you need to go with In order to have a, a, a good agreement between the uh, experimental and theoretical uh, results, uh, we generally uh, make uh, um, magnetic measurement. So we, we, we measure the, the magnetization uh, curve. And then we introduce this magnetization curve in our model. So uh, for each position, we, 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 we do not make a prediction of uh, uh, the, the, okay, the, the position of the um, static uh, magnetization. We, we put what we have measure on our, uh, our sample. Because it's clear that it's very difficult, generally, to have uh, uh, in such a non-linear material to have a, a good model to, 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 un to understand all the parameters that uh, uh, are uh, implicated in, 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 the, in the direction of this uh, static uh, magnetization. But when we do this, it works really nice in all the case we are studying for lay wave, uh, Just Martin, go ahead. Martino, ah, okay, Martino, sorry. That was supposed to. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, just a question uh, if I understand properly, you use, uh, you put the system, a part of your composite system is uh, uh, close to a spin uh, reorientation transition because this enhanced the response, say the susceptibility, the response of the system. But did you try to induce a spin reorientation transition with the acoustic wave? For instance, uh, you see, to, to use the reverse. Uh, no. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no, we, we never try to do, to do this. Because the, the, this is quite a, a, a just a, I'm always on my <laughs> uh, many people uh, would like to use, for instance, um, mechanical coupling on uh, system with transitions, uh, spin reorientation transitions are also caloric transitions, for instance. So, so to induce the transition uh, um, with a different uh, stimulus and using less field because one, one of the problem of this kind of transition is that you have to use huge fields sometimes that this is costly because of volume uh, magnets and etc so to have something cheap <laughs> that okay, perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps a long time ago we have we have done something close to this because uh, if you put the system very close to the to the uh, spin orientation transition point, then in this case, I think that we can, with a small uh, amplitude uh, vibration inside the sample, you can induce the the spin orientation. 
and we have done this a long time ago. But in this case, the, the, the behavior is uh, highly nonlinear. Thank you. Maybe a second. Oh, uh, that's just the follow-up question. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm back. So, okay, so as the the, uh, the second question is related to the page eleven. That's just, that's just a question for curiosity because, oh, wait, maybe it's not this. Ah, oh, four, 14, Sorry, fourteen. Yes, for this different figure I saw there are is it an isotrop no uh, asymmetric with the negative and positive parts so what is the origin or the reason it, it can be just a very small the system or, or uh, sometimes it just there is the hysteresis in the my magnetic uh, magnetization curve. Ah, for my measurement, there are one of the first magnetization so the, 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 the value is at zero value for the C remnant uh, magnetization depends on my amount of equipment required. I'm not sure. Then, no. Maybe I can answer. It's just that I, I think I think this is really uh, repetitive. So if you do it uh, many times, you obtain always the same uh, the same curve. Because it's uh, it's like GSM curve. It's uh, the many the magnetization curve. It's just it's it's a uh, half a cycle. It starts from saturation, and but but if you do the opposite, you will have the reverse curve. We only show the one <laughs> one down cycle just for clarity, because otherwise. Uh, be confused that uh, you will obtain a vertical point uh, or, yeah it was uh, related to the one of martino could you think about having some texture in your magnetic layer that could be affected by this acoustic wave <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving the magnetic wall with the acoustic wave. But in this case, we need to be sure that uh, uh, so because uh, if the wavelength uh, of the acoustic wave is uh, large in comparison of the domain wall structure, then we have just, uh, we just see the, the mean, okay? But if we go up in uh, frequency, perhaps, But then there's also the thing because uh, sorry, I, I'm just uh, answering. Also on on this, uh, the the difficulty is that uh, for this to work, you have to have a pretty good many restriction, uh, which most of the time involves that there is a significant damping in the magnetic layer. So getting uh, domain walls and um, germiums, uh, it's a bit of a challenge. First, we have to. <laughs> Uh, thank you for this interesting talk. Uh, do you think that your sensors now are mature enough to, to be put on a spaceship and a photo of the Star Wars applications to be sent to Mars? Huh? Uh, I saw uh, system on a plane, but not on this topic <laughs> for uh, other applications. Uh, but uh, now, no. I'm not sure that we are ready to. Okay, we are working. We are working to put them in uh, electrical uh, machines. So we have a, a project on this, really, to put the 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 the, the, the sensors uh, between the rotor and the stator. Uh, but uh, it's, it's always a very long uh, trip. Go from the training lab to uh, something like this. Mm. Uh, 
completely sure uh, on, a, on, a, on a machine or on a car or on a plane. Yeah, what, what Olivier did not mention is that one of the advantages of a uh, surface acoustic wave is that you can, you can couple them with, um, yes, with antennas and, and you, can, uh, you can remotely uh, interrogate them because it's a passive device. Uh, so you put an antenna, it works at, uh, let's say, if, if you can design it at two gigahertz, you can, you can send a signal at two gigahertz on the antenna. And uh, you've seen the, the device with the multiple uh, reflections. Uh, you can imagine that you, it's kind of like a RFID tag. You send the wave and goes through the, uh, the surface acoustic wave and comes back and is re-emitted uh, through the antenna, but with the information of the magnetic field. Uh, so ideally, it's a completely, yes, yes, completely passive device that you can inter remotely integrate. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so maybe one thing I, I didn't completely understand is how, uh, um, how robust uh, is the sensor with respect to uniformity of the field that you need to measure? I mean, I suppose that the the, the, the to be measured field must be very uniform over the over the magnetic uh, magnetoelastic material. Generally, we we have a measurement that is uh, proportional to the mean value of what is seen by the acoustic wave. So it depends the size of the a magnetic structure uh, compar in comparison of the, the wavelength of the acoustic wave. Yes, yeah, so and this is why the spatial resolution is determined by the acoustic wave. Yeah, and this is why we, we work on, uh, on this, because in this case, if you put the magnetic field only on one uh, dot, then you are sure that if there is any change in your uh, signal, that it comes from the, the the place where the magnetic field is here is, and so the resolution uh, will be uh, really lower than the acoustic uh, wavelength in this case. If you are in yeah, North so Central, there you can make pillars that are magnetic and non-magnetic yeah. detections. Yeah, yeah, we can just put the, you, we, yeah. we can put the, the magnetic field only on one uh, dot. And in this case, the, the, the rest of the, the dots uh, play the role of, um, uh, uh, phononic crystal, so we can uh, make uh, localized uh, modes. And if we are able to uh, interrogate these modes by uh, uh, propagating uh, acoustic wave, in this case, we, we can uh, be uh, sensitive to a very small uh, or part of the in space, or have a very high resolution in space. <laughs> 